today and future Zoom talks will be recorded on Wednesdays of each week and streamed on Saturdays. We recommend that you check out all the Any Squared Facebook pages in order to participate in the next Zoom talk. Look on the, again, look on the Any Squared Facebook event pages to participate. So without further ado, I present you Any Squared Spotlight Art Talks featuring, <coughs> excuse me, featuring Helen Sanchez Cortez. So welcome everyone uh, to our uh, Any Squared Spotlight. This is our first one. And I'm excited to, for Helen to give us a presentation. She has a PowerPoint to give us. And uh, we met Helen a long time ago um, in 2016 when she walked into our sixth anniversary Future of Any Squared um, event that we have every year. And uh, I remember that's when Jerry met her and was making her help with his stencil. <laughs> I, I with the green spray the paint, with the green spray paint. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was, you know, it's exciting to see Helen give this presentation because I've seen her blossom and bloom as an artist and I, and, uh, and, and, uh, and seen her grow as a person and she, teaches at ASM now, and I'm super proud of her, and so excited for her to give this talk. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Helen, and mute myself. Cool, all right, let's do this. Um, let's see. Hey, Andrew. This is, uh... This is my first real artist talk, you guys. I don't know how to feel. Okay. I'm gonna make also, uh, I invited uh, both of our classrooms, so no pressure. Let me make this big. No. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. There. <laughs> Okie doke. Maybe I have to make this small. All right. Hey everyone. My name is Helen. I'm from Little Village. And welcome to my art talk. Um, so this is my artist and teaching statement. I'm going to read it. And you a little bit more about myself. So um, I was born, raised, and currently I'm making a rumpus in Little Village, Chicago. I'm a visual artist and I make work that tracks my immortality in this world. My work originates from visions and my process is then performed. It is layered, often haptic. Uh, for me, creation involves iteration, commonly via writing, crafts, and research. Um, I identify strongly with the intuitive practice of surreal painting. Um, my pursuit is to deploy sensitive imagery under an everlasting itch to comprehend my psyche. So um, I really like thinking about like memories or like observations that I have in life and then, you know, meditating on these thoughts, you know, through like arts and crafts, writing research, and then I, I also enjoy painting, um, surreal painting. Um, my artistic practice is pedagogical and interdisciplinary. So I dip my toes in a lot of places and um, I like the education aspect of, of this practice. Um, I believe in socially engaged art as a tool for progress. 
um, youth hindered by socioeconomics are my priority because Chicago's isolated and segregated infrastructure creates resource disparities. And um, I feel a sense of urgency and responsibility to connect first generation and low income youth with the massive opportunities offered in their very own city. So I'll unpack that in the next slides. So the way this presentation is structured, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my background, like how my identity informs my personal and social work, um, my early work, um, mainly surreal 2D um, illustrative kind of painting, and then um, um, you know, re refi refining my interest into a more pedagogical practice um, and uh, the work that I'm doing uh, currently, um, kind of um, growing technically and intellectually as I see, um, developing or learning about new like methodologies um, and um, how like my visual and social work are happening simultaneously at the same time. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about my hopes for the future. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm very, very influenced by my heritage, my Mexican American culture, my family, uh, growing up in Little Village um, when there was a lot of gang violence, um, you know, experiencing poverty and homelessness. Um, pursuing education as a first generation high school and college student, and then um, struggling with um, some mental illness issues. So a lot of collage of pictures. This is actually right by my house. So my early work, um, which is kind of like, um, 2015, 2017, um, very influenced, and still to this day, but I was very influenced by the DIY punk scene in my immediate neighborhood. Um, I enjoy everything surreal, everything alternative, and like goth. Um, I really liked that the community came together to um, open up these spaces for young people to express themselves and listen to music and, and share art and, and crafts. Um, and that's that those spaces were just not, you know, formally um, available to me. Um, and and it's one of the main reasons that I'm very drawn to any squared. I think oh. that's how you came to any squared. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. through uh, through Caesar. Caesar. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, I really like your art. Like, you know, yeah, let's go to this show, and then we'd go to the shows, and then, like, yeah, I should check out this space. It's really cool, and I'd be like, yeah, okay. So um, this, is a, this is a little video. I'm going to share a little piece of it. So, a little bit about where I'm coming from. So this is what that looked like. Um, I was a very ambitious high schooler. Um, I just kind of, you know, let myself allowed myself to paint, you know, whatever goofy thing came to my head, and um, yeah. I would go to like local venues, you know, when shows were playing and things like that. And my senior superlative was, um, I think like most artistic. So this is the photo for that. <laughs> so another little collage of what that looked like. A lot of neon, a lot of glitter, a lot of portraits. So this work holds a special place in my heart. I think it was very intuitive and, um, you know, un, not corrupted by, you know, like the 
art school education that I have now. Um, but um, I think it's important to kind of, you know, look at it and reflect on it and see how I've developed my work um, into what it is now. Um, this is a good slide. I should look at it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. So life-changing experiences, um, and, and you know, I'm uh, fairly young still, so I feel like I'm not like, oh, my, you know, my life. But um, I think this is, this is really important for me to reflect on also because I work with high school students, and I think it's, um, it's really important critical years, um, you know, for young people nav navigating, like, college and jobs and you know pursuing art and um, these experiences really do make or break you know the, the op opportunities and possibilities um, for you so uh, I attended a medical prep high school I had did an internship at Rush University I wanted to pursue public health um, more than anything um, but I also did an apprenticeship at the Art Institute of Chicago um, through After School Matters it was a program called Teen Lab and um, I was part of the CPS Student Advisory Council because my high school didn't have an advisory council. So I applied and, and participated in um, the CPS cohort of, I think, 2017. Um, so we worked with Dr. Janice uh, Jackson on developing programs um, citywide for um, uh, elementary and high school students, and then also participating in Any Squared um kind of ultimately uh developed into pursuing an art education degree studio day wednesdays at any squared critical part of my development <laughs> um these are great shots um so one so this is more um like these are classes that i've taken in college um i had to give a presentation to um sophomores and it you know um other people want to know what courses you're taking to know if they you know they should take them too or things like that so here's just like an array of classes that i've taken um um i am interested in taking um a little bit of everything um mostly like traditional 2D. Um, I don't do a lot of um, media stuff like digital, like uh, um, graphic design or photography, like that stuff. It's not um, very intuitive for me, but yeah. So my inspirations, uh, <laughs> actually I actually have a squeak on here, oh my God. Um, but um, yeah, I really like um, Mexican, like artesanía. Um, I think about psychology, I think about like humanities, religion, current events, music. I'm very influenced by music. Um, I really want my work to kind of, you know, continue carrying this, this vibrancy, but also, you know, um, be a way for me to analyze, you know, some deeper feelings or um, reflect on, you know, significant moments of my life, whether they're past or present. Okay, so, um, this is work. Any questions to this point? I think you should, should continue on. I love, I love this chair, but I like chairs. Um, uh, do, do, does anyone have any questions about anything? I do, but, but it's a long, long windy one. I can wait to the end, so. Okay, yeah, I'll keep going. I'll, I'll keep going. Okay. Uh, I know I feel like I've been going kind of slow. There's still a couple more slides. So um, yeah, I'm, you know, trying to experiment with new methods of making. Um, I really, really like working with wire. So these are some just um, sculptures I did. And then I continued painting. So this is more of that portraiture. Um, these uh, Loteria paintings are oil paintings. They're um, kind of like four foot and three foot. 
or five foot and four foot? I have, a, I have a specific thing to ask you about that, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Like, what does it mean to you to paint these? What, 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 because a lot of them are self-portraits too, but there's, mm -hmm. you've done different ones. What, are, what does that mean to you to paint those? Yeah, um, I think I, uh, with this particular project, I just wanted to challenge myself. I was trying to really question like, um, I don't know, like what, what does surreal portraiture mean? Uh, for me and like how do I achieve that technically so um, I, I had played with um, toyed with like um, different like symbolism or things that mean like hidden meanings for myself but um, I think this was more of like a technical exploration like I was um, um, drawn to the Loteria cards and I knew I wanted to um, paint like that, that was reoccurring in my head but I also wanted to do um, a, like some portraits so it was it was very like a literal kind of decision of like okay let's merge these two and let's see how I can apply this because this is these are my first oil paintings so um, I wanted to challenge myself technically so that that's more of what this was about. Robert asks um, is there any sign uh, any significance in the numbers? Yeah, so um, these are um, originally Loteria cards, which are like a Mexican bingo, and their cards are numbered. It's like a deck of cards, but they there's no um, portraits, not like this anyway. So it's like um, random things. So there's like cards for fruit, for objects, for people. So like a one card would be like the drunk, and then another card would be like the watermelon, like different things like that. Um, so I just, two of the cards that exist are the heart and the nopal, and I added a portrait of myself and my sister. In the, in the chat, Daniel um, is, is asking, is there any reason why the hammer and sickle were in the collage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, communism, <laughs> just different, I know, ideas about society and how like our world works and you know I like Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo was a communist. I don't know I think a lot of people I admire are, are communists or communist like thinkers and um, yeah no it's interesting interesting um, well I don't want to say communist like Marxism is interesting to me and and Marxist thinkers are interesting to me. Um, cool. So uh, while I'm in school, I'm also participating in community projects. This was a mural I took on um, in the winter of that year. It was really cold and I painted the uh, butterfly. Uh, that, that was uh, the Becoming mural that was a group project at, mm -hmm. um, at Kilbourne Park. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a lot of different people painting on this. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, it was very cold when you were painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is an Any Squared project. Um, several members uh, worked on this. Tracy helped organize it. Well, she organized it. And um, yeah, I, I think I, the only thing I really painted was a butterfly. So it was, uh, it was, the idea was, uh, Rosa Pineda, Pineda it, it was her idea and Jerry helped do a lot of the conceptual part of it. And then we had a lot of different people helping paint it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was beautiful. Um, so this is a performance like video installation kind of sound um, project I did. It was called um, Sleep Like Sleep, Shark Sleep. And the score uh, was to sleep like a shark. And, you know, we had um, um, students, you know, interpret that in whichever way. And these are the shots from that. <laughs> Some more performance. It's just, you know, experimenting. Um, um, I was um, as a character, I was a clown and I had a series of scores like asking people to do things and then responding to what they did. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to hurry up. So um, 
uh, a project that I began called um, Trauma Time Travel is a series of ongoing projects, all interdisciplinary, kind of about um, doing self-research and um, um, like, um, yeah, like investigating personal trauma and then um, recreating environments or archive, like physical, tangible um, art, like archive um, on, you know, said trauma to kind of help, um, you know, alle alleviate the trauma in a way, but also like investigate it and, and, and um, create, um, yeah, archive for it. I think that's really important because, um, you know, concepts of, of memory and memory loss are something that I, I think about. So um, these are a couple of works where I included a video uh, and video installations um, to do that. Um, this year, I took a year off from school. And but um, during that time, I still made some work. So these are some I made. Um, this is a triptych I made out of wood. I constructed, I cut the wood and, and I um, made a painting of a Madonna and child and uh, collaged photographs of my mother and I. This was a lithograph, the same, um, you know, my interpretation of the iconography. Um, some uh, work experience. I worked at the Chicago Children's Museum for um, almost a year and I started working at After School Matters where I'm currently still working. So these are the first um, programs that I participated in as an instructor. Um, so these are my latest paintings. Um, they're much, much smaller. I think um, the smallest I worked actually, they're like about, I wanna say 10 by 10 inches, um, acrylic on, on wood panels. And again, I'm continuing to explore you know, the idea of surreal portraiture and also um, landscape. That's what these paintings look like. Um, I developed a program called 20 Under 20 that most of you are familiar with that um, was made possible with the help of Any Squared, uh, where we um, yeah, created a program for young people to apply and participate in, and they were mentored by any squared artist of similar um, disciplines or disciplines that they were interested in, and uh, we kind of helped them, you know, make new work and also, you know, participate fully in the installation part of, of putting up a show, and for many of them, it was their first time being in a show, and, um, you know, they, they got to walk away with, you know, the experience of community, which is invaluable and, um, you know, something that they could put on their resume and um, hopefully get scholarships for. Um, and then, so this summer I worked on a mural with um, Jerry and um, Jesse Villa and Alexi Atkin. Um, uh, with the help of the Back of the Yards Neighborhood Council in um, Back of the Yards on 47th and Walcott um, at the Chicago Driving School. So this is a sketch of um, what, uh, yeah, the sketch I proposed and that we ultimately went with and um, some painting. So this was, um, it's, this is a um, one summer Chicago project. So like after school matters, we worked with um, high school students. We had remote learning for six weeks and then um, two weeks students painting on the wall and then the rest we kind of uh, completed um, as teaching artists. So this is what that mural looks like. Shout out to Jerry for helping you know, put this project together. Um, so there's a quote by Andrew Solomon. Um, read it. And yep. We're 
we're good on time. Tracy, you can't, no one can hear you. You're, you're on mute, Tracy. <laughs> I can hear you, Tracy, don't worry. Oh, wait, what? Okay. <laughs> I'm in the same house as her. I mean, ah, of course, of course. Sense, so like, everyone I'm, can unmute, like if you're, if you have a question to ask um, and we're, and, and Helen, can you not share the screen anymore? Oh yeah, for sure. There we go. Hello I everyone. I my toes in some like um, sewing and um, ceramics, but I haven't formally documented that work. I know Robert had a question. What is your question, Robert? Unmute yourself and ask your question. I had a question. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, um, I noticed in your work, Helen, that you use a lot of, well, I would say maybe Catholic icon, icons. Uh, is that reflective of your own spiritual beliefs or is it part of your cultural or neighborhood background? Oh, that's a really good question. I just wrote a paper on this, um, doing research on, you know, my contemporary interpretation of the symbol, because a lot of people have been asking me, and I'm also, like, trying to analyze, like, my own decisions. Um, yeah, so I think this stems from my own, like, investigation on the concept of fertility and my own personal relationship to that idea um, as something that I, like, worry about and, and meditate upon, and um, I, a lot of it is also weaved into this, you know, my own uh, investigation that I talked about in terms of, like, uh, trauma and time travel, so um, I'm exploring kind of ideas of um, maternity, is that how you say it? Um, and, you know, my relationship with my mother, and um, that, that's where that um, iconography comes from. It's like, um, I'm appropriating this imagery and exploring my own uh, traumas and relationship with, with my family um, through that. What is your experience with the gang? Since I saw gang pictures in there. The gangs? I mean, yeah. um, now it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, looking back now, it is, it is, um, seriously, like, um, like, whack to think that that was just, like, my, like, norm. I don't know, like, I grew up, um, nine years old playing outside, you know, riding my bike from block to block with, like, just gangs, like, posted up, like, it was nothing, and, um, you know, a lot of, uh, violence and shootings and, you know, like, neighbors mourning for their children and, like, you know, makeshift altars, you know, on the corner of my block for my entire upbringing up until, um, we moved a couple of years ago. Um, so I live closer to Pilsen. I live near Cermak and Western, but, um, I grew up all over Little Village and, um, yeah, it was definitely, definitely rough. And then, the added layer of that was that, um, you know, yes, you know, my upbringing, living in different apartments, but also like um, um, experiencing like severe poverty and then ultimately homelessness. Like that was an added layer of like, it's you know, it clock. wasn't just gangs. It was like drug, drug abuse and like, not in my personal, not in my family, thank God, but like, you know, just existing, existing around me. It was really intense. Yeah. Okay. I have a quick question because I have to head out and go to another meeting, but um, I'm actually really curious because um, I, I had a similar trajectory actually with um, working with Tracy in any square for a while and then deciding to go to grad school after. And so when you were, I guess, yeah, man, I had a massive question. I have to be really quick. Um, I guess what it was, um, as you were making that transition from like, I guess, working as a community artist, you know, or working outside of the institution into going into the institution, how was that transition for you? Or how is it going? As your I feel speaker. like, yeah, so to answer that quickly, I feel like they've happened at the same time, because like, you know, as I, you know, I, I was introduced to any squared, I was, you know, going through the process of applying to college, and a lot of um, our any squared peers are like SASC alum, so I feel like that connection was always there, and then it's only really um, sprouted even more so after 
um, you know, college. Cause you know, now while I'm still in school, but I'm still doing a lot of the community work and, and um, the teaching opportunities have come from this community. Um, <laughs> from Jerry, actually. <laughs> um, he's hooked me up with, um, you know, my any square jobs. And, you know, it's, it's, it's happened here, not really, you know, SASC didn't hand that to me. Super cool. I really want to talk more to you about that in the future. But okay. yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, so you said that you're art was corrupted by an art school education. So like what's different or what changed? Um, I think, well, this is, ugh, I feel kind of weird. Um, I don't know how comfortable I feel answering this. Like, I think what I mean by that is that the pos, like, I think especially my freshman year, I was exposed to a lot of work really quickly and a lot of like, um, you know, I'm really grateful, um, you know, for my education at SAC, but it's so many opportunities and so many like ways of doing like different ways, like of doing things. Like you could make a sculpture, you could make a painting, you could make a comic, for example. And then um, that when you are only confined to like, okay, well, I just have the canvas that they gave me that my high school teacher gave me and this like set of paints, there's nothing else for me to do. So it was very like work with what you have and very like um, intuitive. So I kind of just painted and collaged with like, you know, the magazines that I had. Um, but, you know, later after that, it's like, okay, well, I have access to, you know, um, facilities or things like that. Then it's like, okay, well, I, it just makes me think more about how I can do things. And um, yeah, so then I'm like, oh, well, I could have done this instead or, you know, does that, does that answer? Uh, yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, I do. do. Go ahead. Well, okay, I'm going to add to that really quickly. So another thing, what I mean by corrupting is that, um, uh, so as much as art school is making art, it's also like being in constant critique. So whatever you make, even if it's excellent, you're going to be critiqued on it. So I think like, it's always thinking about like, oh, what are they going to say? What are they going to say? Versus like, oh, it's just, you know, in high school, no one even, you know, no one wants you to go to art school. I just have a question. Um, it was interesting I, to hear you say you're relating your art practice to public health. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have in mind like art therapy or something different than that? Um, well, um, before uh, deciding on art education, I was interested in the com like community-based work of public health, like, you know, bringing... Okay. Um, healthcare to people who did, you know, did not have access to that. But all of that directly translated um, over to education and, you know, my art, like artistic practice, like me being an artist. And then, you know, as much as I believe that for healthcare is how I, like, as strongly as I believe uh, in that for healthcare, I believe in that for education. I just didn't know that that was a possibility for me. I didn't know that I could, like, pursue education in that way. Mm. Like, I didn't know I could be an advocate for education. <laughs> so that's, that's how I ultimately um, decided so, so on just being it. educated in art in itself is like a public health issue. You, um, you know. Interesting. I think that's a cool way to think about it also, but no, it was more like, I, I didn't know that I, um, I don't know, like I, I was, I was interested in healthcare um, and I wanted to go into healthcare because I didn't know that I could pursue um, art education the way I'm doing it now. Okay. No, Robert had a question. Yeah. Are you still there, Robert? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> um, just wondering, um, now that you're pursuing, you know, your degree and you know a career in art do you still have the same relationship with 
friends growing up in the neighborhood or have you moved away from some of your friends or is there a tension between maybe the Helen of younger years versus the Helen now and where you're going in the future? Um, not, I don't think I'm, um, I, I'm still technically in the neighborhood and um, my cousin who is a senior in high school lives a block away from where I grew up and um, you know, I, I stay in touch um, and the, what, what used to be the homeless shelter where I lived is only a block away from where I currently live now. So from my house. So the, I'm, I stayed the same and my experiences that shaved me have not changed. Those are permanent. The neighborhood has changed and the environment that existed when I was there is no longer the same. So that's changed. Um, so I cannot relate to maybe the young people that are growing up where I did now because maybe their experiences are different. But, um, you know, I think about, you know, my experiences are only, you know, um, based in Little Village, but, you know, I try to um, talk to young people and, and I think it's really special that they know that I have their backs and that I, I know, you know, if, if and, you know, when they face anything that I faced that, you know, we can share that with, so I can relate to young people that might be going through, um, you know, similar things currently, wherever they live in the city. Anyone else have a, have a question? Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Whoops, you cannot. Hello, can you hear me okay? Hey, okay, my throat's a bit off. Thank you. Um, this question relates to a lot of the things you, the themes you've been touching on. Um, you know, we all have stories we tell about ourselves that are particularly powerful when we're young. And I hear you talk about uh, poverty and homelessness. Um, and then I see your, uh, your senior picture in high school as this, um, I don't remember the moniker, but this creative, you know, uh, wildflower and butterfly and I'm curious about what the inputs were and triggers were in your life that allowed you to tell um, a, an expanded story of yourself so that you could see yourself as an artist uh, yeah yeah um, yeah for sure um, my slide on those life-changing experiences had included um, any squared and then the uh, apprenticeships I had in high school um, two of the big ones were teen lab at the Art Institute of Chicago uh, was a program for teens to hang out after school at the Art Institute um, and it was not an advanced program it was just kids hanging out having access to like bins of art supplies and doodling um, and just having that space like having you know, After School Matters as an organization provide money for instructors to open a program at the museum to let people like me take a train and spend time there. That, you know, made me feel like I had value as a, as a young artist. And then when I did the other, the internship with CPS, the Student Advisory Council, um, they pretty much showed us what's behind the curtain of CPS and how um, you know, how money is allocated um, in the schools and, and uh, no one had told me that like I could be in a position of power, like you could be, well, there was more of like a leadership uh, internship. So it was like, you know, you could be an alderman or you could be this, you could be that, like you can, you know, you're not just, it was really empowering for me to hear things like that. Cause no, I, you know, I didn't know I could even, you know, I didn't think about teaching as like a real thing. Like, those, you know, that's, that's why it's so important for me to do what I do, because I think, you know, we think, we think young people, like, have it figured out, but really, I don't think, you know, there's someone, you really need someone telling them, like, hey, you can do this, <laughs> like, you are able to, you have permission to, um, and then this is how to get there, so, um, you know, having people like Tracy saying, yeah, like, I'll write you a recommendation letter, things like that, um, yeah, invaluable. I know that you also did Louder Than a Bomb. 
like you did spoken word and like you were writing different things with a group of people mm -hmm. and you did performance too when you were in high school she organized the louder than a bomb team that any squared sponsored i'm just saying it's a the writing part is something that you do too mm -hmm. yeah i try who else has some questions anybody else I have one. Um, is there any time that you had um, that you would consider a failure? Um, and if you had a failure, what did you learn from it? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, um, yeah, failure is a real, oh, failure is like a really intense, like triggering word for me. Um, I mean, I mentioned at the beginning of the of the um, presentation that, like, among these, you know, I don't know, personal traits, like, um, I I struggle with depression, and that has been like, you know, ongoing and, and chronic. And um, as as much as I like, I'm accomplishing things, and I feel like I'm doing things, like in the back of my head, it's like, oh, like you know, it's all, the world is actually falling apart. So it's really like a delusional um, um, problem, <laughs> problem. Um, but it really does take over and it, it, it can be crippling, so crippling that um, in going into my second year of college, I was, I had just, you know, I had worked my first um, job through, through After School Matters with Brian actually. And I had finished a successful first semester of college. I was doing well academically and, you know, with pursuing my career and, and with friends and my health. And it just crumbled and I had to take a leave of absence like halfway through my semester. And that was very painful. And, um, you know, I don't want to say it was, a, it was a failure, but it was in the moment I felt like I was like I was just failing and letting everyone that knew me down and it was embarrassing and I wanted to crawl and like, have, you know, disappear <laughs> from the earth. I didn't want anyone to see that. But um, you got back up, got back up. <laughs> and it's, you know, you take, it took some time and, you know, it's um, changing my perspective of like what that, what that means. Um, but, you know, it felt like failure at the time, but um, it was a very, it was a trying moment. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a defeat in a way that like, it was, you know, it was not like, oh, I, I, I left, like I left school for a year. I just had to take the whole time off and then try again. So yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. oh. Any more questions before we wrap up? Cause it's almost time. Yeah. I got a question. So like, with your uh, current art and everything, like where do you want to see yourself sort of improve upon? Like, what do you want to, you feel like you could uh, do better in and what do you want to sort of master? I think I wish I had more time to make, um, like to paint. Like I wish I had more time to make small paintings, maybe some larger paintings. But um, right now I'm very consumed with like the academics and with my job, like we're working with, with young people and like supporting them. Um, and then, so there's two branches to the work that I wanna do. So it's like, you know, I, I want to paint and I wanna make, you know, my own work and think, things like that. That's fun for me, that's exciting. But I also really, you know, I'm really ambitious about like, learn, like growing in, in my academics and like developing like curriculum and things like that. That's also really exciting for me. And that's something I want to work on. We have time for like maybe one more question before we wrap it up. Now or never. <laughs> now or never. <laughs> um, going off of uh, what Andrew said, um, was, there any, was there a time um, you as an artist uh, that you were pushed? Like that really sort of like, uh, you know, that you're like, oh, this is hard, but I'm, you know, going to try my very best at whatever this thing might be.
be? You know, as an artist, were you ever felt like, oh man, this is pushing me to the limit of my artistic uh, whatever? Yeah, initially I was gonna say like, oh, like starting college was new and different, but I think, no. Um, I think um, the 20, 20 under 20 was like so challenging because it was, it was like legit, like it was for real. It wasn't, you know, I do programming and, and stuff right now, but it's, it's, um, it's different because it's like, you know, you have your boss and you have people kind of guiding you and, and it's already structured. There's someone that structured it already for me. You know, I create the content, but someone structured it for me. This was like completely from scratch. You know, it had to be done well. Tracy was my backbone. <laughs> like Tracy's really the best. And um, yeah, no, it was so challenging. Like even now I feel like, oh my God, I could have done so much better. But yeah, no, I-, I She came up with a really great curriculum though. <laughs> It was awesome. Yeah, that was really <laughs> challenging. Because I was like, yeah, it was just so weird. Because <laughs> it was a combination of, um, it was a combination of the curriculum and having people be mentored and then also having a professional show, you know, mm -hmm. or a professional was, looking show, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I was like talking to, you know, the young people, which are my age. So it was so like... I was like, don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, it was really I really had to step it up. It was like, it was really a trip. Like, you know, at when we had the show and parents coming up to me, like, thank you so much. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, oh, but great. um, no, yeah. I. <laughs> it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really, sh it was like, I don't know, it was so exciting for me because it's like, this is what it's about. Like, this is what any squirt is about. And like, it was, you know, none of us got paid. Like, it was really because we, you know, believed and believed in what we were doing. And it was, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Cool. So well, does thank any you. I have one yeah. more. Okay. Go, Robert, go. Um, speaking of any squared, I often say that every neighborhood needs an any squared. Um, do you know of any so-called, or I call them art deserts in the city that you're looking to really get to? Um, I do yeah. think any squared is a really cool resource. And, and I'm thinking, you know, are there efforts or do you see art deserts that you would like to tackle within the city? I think the the far uh, south and west side um, is where I think I would say our art desert, pretty much everywhere but the north side and like Pilsen. <laughs> um, you know, even Little Village is okay. But yeah, right now it's like, I think the crisis is like, poor is like poorly done, like community art. Like there's something going on right now where like, you know, these um, neighborhood like councils are just trying to cover up every block with like you know a mural and it's not being done intentionally or you know with the community in mind so i think that's a problem that's even scarier than not having art i think um you know because you know especially like murals or large projects like that are so important um should be in the hands of the community but um yeah that like social aspect that social part of it of, like getting together and having you know free spaces like that yes i think every neighborhood needs an any squared but um you know that's that's a thing like jerry and i uh tried to start a not-for-profit right before covid and then covid happened and you know you know but that that's that's something that's like in the books that's something that you know I'm trying to figure out myself because yes I'm going into art education and yeah like the idea of teaching is cool but like um the, it can be done on so many levels like yeah the idea of like having an organization facilitating programs out of there and having other art opportunities for 
you know, not just children, but neighborhoods is, is, is really important. And um, yeah, I'm still figuring, <laughs> figuring out how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. So I'm going to say that we're going to wrap it up because it was, was going to be a, yes. uh, a half hour talk. And thank you, Helen, for doing this. It's awesome. And, and I think that we're going to continue to talk but not be recorded for the art talk. Um, afterwards, we can hang out afterwards. Um, I'm going to share the screen for our next, next week. We're going to, Tatiana is, is going to um, be the speaker for our next art talk. We're trying to do these once a week. Um, and, and we might go to two as we are kind of shut down because of COVID, because we can't go into the hairpin and I'm not going to have people here yet. Um, so, so, uh, hopefully you can, you know, come back next week and talk to Tati. Um, and actually anybody, I know that Andrew was interested. I know Brian was interested. I know different people were interested in being one of the speakers and, and we're just going to start pulling names out of hats because I have a list of people, but I, I, a lot of you, I would love to hear from you. Um, Piloto, I would love you to do an art talk. It's like, cause what our concept for this is to have, uh, not only talks from really experienced artists, but also people who are just getting started out and have it be all ages. So we have a different kinds of points of view of where, where people are at in their art. So um, anyway, uh, thank, ev thank you everyone. And, um, and uh, it's been nice chatting with you all. We, we lost a few on the way. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Any Square Arts uh, Spotlight Art Talks. If you want to tune in next week, Saturday at 6 p.m., we will be doing this again. And if you want to participate, visit Any Square on uh, Instagram and Facebook to take part in the December 9th Zoom conversation at 7.30 and uh, which will again stream on Saturday the 12th. Our spotlight artist is Tatiana Howard, a visual artist, arts instructor, arts instructor and administrator born and bred from Chicago's West Side. She collaborates with arts organizations, galleries, venues, and other artists producing live artwork, group shows, artist talks, and additional programming. Her paintings represent her emotions, focused on pain and evolution and reflect herself in her vivid, sensual, gory, feminine, illustrious portraits. Uh, follow Tati on Instagram at T-A-T-T-I-G-R-A-M, Tatigram. And we'll hope to see you next week, Wednesday, 730. Thanks and have a wonderful, wonderful night.